happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. It is so good to, to, to be with you all. I was about to say see you, but that would be some deep seeing. <laughs> happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Last week, a few of you called and asked, was I okay? Because I had a little bit of a crying thing going on there in the middle of my sermon. And I, you know, uh, realized that, you know, um, it's okay for us to cry. You know, we're, we're going through some deep stuff. But I asked myself when I got home, why were you crying? It wasn't your husband. And um, I thought about it. Um, I realized that my friend really, really loved her husband. And because I'm connected to my friend, it matters to me that she lost her husband. And I thought that's what Easter and Resurrection Sunday is all about. And that's what maybe makes it a little bit hard for us not to gather together because of the connections, because of the faces, because of the familiarity. But you are at home and we are expanding how we view our connections. We are connected. We are the United Church of Hyde Park. And I just want to say, Happy Easter. Welcome to our worship celebration. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to celebrate that Jesus is alive. And it's so good to have you out there in virtual reality. We are so excited on this morning to be united and to acknowledge our connections, not just our connections with each other, but our connection to Jesus Christ, our Savior, our risen Lord. Happy Easter. Easter. This is your call to worship. We are still isolated, still feeling like we have been left alone in a shadowed place. But this is the day. Hope tips toes us awake. Light guide us through the shadows. We are keeping a safe distance from others. We are quarantining ourselves. We are not gathering as God's people, but this is the day that the Lord hath made. Plant joy in our winter hearts. Drawn out spires cries with laughter. This is a time of uncertainty and fear. We wonder what today will bring. We worry about the coming tomorrow. But this is the day that the Lord hath made. The day grace does crawl us in grave art. Resurrection wonders outshines the brightest sun. An empty tomb filled us with good news.
still with us? I'm trusting that you are. Happy, happy Easter. This is the time where we get to share some peace. And one of the things that gives me peace, I don't know about you, but I want you to think about that right now. What gives you peace? One of the things that gives me peace, and it isn't too religious, is my pillow. When I was a child, I used to love to hold my pillow. It was something about my pillow that conveyed peace. We have a surprise for you today, and you will get to see the faces of other members. And maybe that will bring you peace, too. Here it is our tradition to say, may the peace of Christ be with you. And the response is, and also with you. May God's peace united and members and friends, may God's peace really, truly be with you today. May the peace of Christ be with you. I hope that you can feel that. Hear the words of the Lord. We are reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying in the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? 
she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them he had said these things to her. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. I'd like to use for this Easter Sunday a sermonic theme of looking for Jesus, looking for Jesus. My grandmother was a singer. In church, if my grandmother sang, you could best believe we were going to be stirred or somebody was going to shout or the majority of the church would be up on their feet clapping in a frenzy of happiness. When my grandmother sang, I believe the world shifted. She just wasn't a good singer, but she had spirit and all of her life was up in the songs that she sang, and you could feel it. But it wasn't just in the church, it wasn't just in public places, it wasn't just where a lot of folks were gathered. She sang all through her day. If she were putting clothes on the clothing line, she would be singing. If she were taking clothes off the clothes line, she would be singing. If she was feeding the chicken, she would be singing. If she was collecting eggs from the chicken coop, she was singing. If she was cooking, she was singing. All through her life, it was accompanied by singing. And I would find that her singing would find its way even into her cooking, her parties, her care. She was something until she wasn't. This past week, we have been looking back. We've been looking from passion to palms, from the royal entry to the arrest, from the party to the lament, from the good time to the duck, duck, goose. You're it, Jesus. We've been looking back from the table to the kiss, from the communion to the cross, from the before COVID-19 to we're right in the middle of a pandemic time. We've been looking backward from the living of life to the being in the middle of storm. We find ourselves this week looking back, retracing our steps as we try to understand it better by and by, looking back over details, trying to make sense of even how we got here, looking back from let the good times roll to the words of Marvin Gaye, what's going on times. It's good to look back. It's good to remember grandmas. It's good to look backwards. In West Africa, there is a clan called the Akan people. And the Akan people have come up with a whole system of what are called Adinkra symbols. One of those symbols is a picture of a Sankofa bird who is looking back. The bird's body is faced north, but his head sits on its shoulders looking south. But why would a bird be looking backwards, you might wonder. How can one drive forward when one is looking in the rear view mirror? The Akan people believe the bird is looking back in order to move forward. Sankofa means it's not taboo to fetch what is at risk of getting left behind. Marion Wright Edelman quoted in her spirit when she declared that no child shall be left behind. 
looking back to say we are doing something fundamentally wrong in these United States of America that is leading to leaving marginalized poor kids behind. Let's look back and fetch what we have left behind that we might move forward. The Khan people believe that there must be learning and new movement as time passes. As this forward march proceeds, the knowledge of the past must never be forgotten. I'm going to repeat that. The knowledge of the past, the wisdom, the lessons learned must never be forgotten. The Hasidic Jews took it a little far, but they got the message. We must never forget, looking backwards, that we might move forwards. And it is in the looking back, I remember my grandmother and the songs she sang, the songs that kept coming that got on my last nerve when I was a child, which is why we practice spiritual discipline anyhow, because one day we will look back and retrieve off of years of living in shelves something we needed. I remember my grandmother singing, count your blessings, name them one by one, and a friend stopped me and says, I don't participate in such shenanigans. I think that's really cheesy. Say more, my friend. Well, most people that count their blessings are a little short on blessings in the first place, my friend declares. And so I thought about this. I thought about the people that are counting their blessings, and I get a point. My friend has a point. Generally, the people that count their blessings, maybe it appears to the eye or the surface, don't have a whole lot of blessings. You see, folks that are at the cash register that are holding up the line, you know when you're standing in line and there's that person at the cash register counting out their pennies. They're usually a little short on blessings. But it doesn't stop them from counting their pennies anyway because pennies add up. They might add up a little bit slower than dollar bills, but they eventually add up. And so we may be these days a little short on blessings. But I say count them anyway. And while you're looking backwards, go on a search of sorts to be cognizant of your blessings. In my down-home country church, someone would say, well, I got up this morning, and that's a blessing. Well, I'm clothed in my right mind, and that's a blessing. Well, someone is gone and I'm still here, and that's a blessing. And after a while, we begin to count up the pennies, and the folks with the least amount start to feel rich. You find loose change here and there, and you start to feel real good about the ways in which you're blessed right now. If you are watching me on your device, that's a blessing. If you're listening to me on your device, that's a blessing. And at some point in the worship experience, someone would say, I'm not what I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. You see, when I look back over my life, when I look back and remember, when I remember the songs my grandmother taught me, I'm able to move forward. It's good to look back but it's also good to look forward. And this is where we enter the biblical text today. Mary got up early on a Sunday morning looking forward to making her way to the tomb. In the first seven days after her death, one was to mourn for the deceased. If one was not at home, one could be found at the tomb. Mary wasn't at home, but Mary was making her way to the tomb. In the immediate aftermath of the death of Jesus, Mary did what many of us do. She drew close to the deceased. Many with the loss of loved ones try to have a beautiful funeral. We try to have a home-going service. We try to knock the ball out of the park and put the person away nicely. We drift around in shock. We dance between they were just here and now they're gone. I, I just remember talking to them the other day and now they're gone. We pick out the right outfit. We look at them. Some even with a little bit of drama 301 try to get in the casket. And Mary pretty much was trying to draw close to Jesus, fussing over Jesus, wanting to get to the body so she could be there. 
I guess others thought Jesus was dead and he wasn't going anywhere. But Mary was looking forward, even if the future was right in front of her nose. She was looking forward to finish the lingering in the presence of Jesus and she gets to the tomb and he's not even there. Some of you were looking forward to birthdays that were not celebrated. Some of you were looking forward to trips that had to get canceled. Some of you have had funerals and no one came. Some of you have had to bury loved ones without space to grieve. Some of you were looking forward to graduation ceremonies that had to get squashed. Some of you were looking forward to celebrating milestones that had to be put on hold. Some of you were looking forward to weddings that are either not happening or the party size got drastically reduced. Simple everyday tasks that we totally take for granted. Some of you were looking forward to going to your aerobic class, the morning stop at the coffee shop, a visit with a friend. And some of us were even looking forward to this day to come to church on Easter and to celebrate the risen Lord singing and hugging one another and passing the peace. Simple things. And now life has been suspended in midair as we fight to get the last roll of toilet tissue. Life has been put on pause as we try to get as many people as possible to stay your blessed assurance at home. Shelves are empty showing our true color of fear. It almost seems too much to bear. It's almost surreal as we are confronted with a new normal that ain't normal. She was looking for Jesus. Instead, there was an empty tomb. She got turned around. She got turned on her heels. And she began to ponder, what could this possibly mean? And she was concerned and worried. What are they not telling us? What do we not know about COVID-19? Why are there so many deaths? They took my Jesus. And I don't know where they put him, is what fell off her lips as she ran back to tell the disciples. This week I've been looking myself. I'm in a perpetual, I am in a perpetual state of looking for this thing or that. I'm always looking for something. This week I have a three-story home, tri-level they call it. I sat down after traveling from the top floor to the bottom floor, back up to the first floor, and just when I sit down, you know that feeling, and you kind of get relaxed, and you're ready to read what's before you, and you remember you left your reading glasses on one of the other floors. And you realize if you want to see what's in front of you, you're going to have to get back up and go looking. I was listening to an organizer, and the golden rule according to this organizer is everything has a place. Well, that sounded like good news to me. I thought if everything in my house could find its place, I'd be okay. So I started walking around and I ended up at my son's room. And I say to my son what the mantra says to me, everything on this floor has got a place. There's a place it should be, son. And so I try to order my life, but I still find myself, even when I put everything in its place, I find myself still missing and looking for this or that. I find myself confused, bedazzled, thrown off a bit as I look for this thing or that thing. Even though I think I put it in this place when I need it, it seems like it decides to move someplace else. But this week I'm talking about something a little bit deeper when I talk about looking. I'm talking about something deeper when I talk about searching. I'm talking about looking for Jesus. I can relate to Mary looking for something and being unable to find it. But today again I'm talking about something deeper. And then I hear my grandmother looking back to go forward. I hear my grandmother singing in a beautiful pitch, ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to help you. He will carry you through. And when I hear her sing, I feel like everything is gonna be okay. Ask 
the Savior to help you, child. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to carry you through. I mean, he is willing to help you. He will carry you through. And I know in that moment of looking backward that I have enough for today. It's important to look forward even when we find empty tombs. It's important to look forward even when the news is not good. It's important to look forward even when we discover the droplets can linger in the air. It's important to look forward even when we are in a city of dry bones. It's important to look forward even when the numbers keep climbing upward with the promise that we will level off this weekend. It's okay to look back, but it's important to look forward. My grandmother sang her way through it. You might have to count your blessings through it, but it's important to look forward. You might have to fetch something off of a shelf from your past to get through it, but it's important to look forward. You might have to pray yourself through it. You might have to read your way through it. You might have to lay prostate before the Lord through it. You might have to do a project after project in your house through it. You might have to Netflix your way through it. You might have to TikTok your way through it. You might have to DJ your way through it. You might have to meditate your way through it, but let's do it and let's get through it. It's important to look forward. The beauty of this story is that Mary looked forward. The beauty of this story is that after looking forward, she finds Jesus. But she doesn't just find any old Jesus, she finds Jesus alive. She gets in the middle of the storm and she doesn't give up. She continues to look forward. They've misplaced my Jesus. I don't know where they put him, but I'm going to keep looking till I find him. She looks for Jesus even when the tomb is empty. She might cry, but she keeps it moving. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He went to the cross, and on the third day he got up. Our Lord and Savior is living, and because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Your expectations may not be all that high this day, but Jesus is alive. Mary kept looking, and so can you. And we can get through this. Not only was Jesus lifted up, but Mary got lifted up. Not only was Mary get lifted up, but Peter got lifted up. Not only did Peter get lifted up, but the other disciple got lifted up. Not only did the other disciple get lifted up, but the Doubt and Thomas got lifted up. And because they got lifted up and Jesus got lifted up, we are lifted up. Today, by proxy, we are lifted up. Jesus is alive. I'm going to tell y'all, keep on keeping on. Mary went looking for a dead Jesus. And after much looking and fretting and worrying and stirring and running and about to lose her mind, she found a living Jesus. A living Jesus. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Amen.
Happy Easter. We were just talking about counting your blessings. Now we want you to count your change because it is offering time. I was talking to a senior who is also a friend of mine this week, and I said, you know, do you have more money now? And she was like, yeah, I have a little bit more money because I can't go out to spend it. And that gave me an idea. If you have more money, <laughs> we'd love for you to share your more with us. We also realize other people have different situations, but count those pennies uh, because they do add up. And we do want you to share uh, with us uh, so that we can continue to sustain our church on the corner, that we can continue to support uh, being a light in the world to our larger denomination, and that we can support our staff, and that we can be here on Sundays and share a wonderful worship celebration with you. Uh, I took a peek while they were playing and saw that two of our members, Stephanie and Mike, actually got dressed up in their Easter clothes. And I was like, how cool is that? People are finding so many ways to be creative um, in this time at home, and it just, it just blesses me. And I am inviting you to bless United Church of High Park. So we want you to share your resources. If you're on that walk with the dog or you're walking out and you're doing the social distancing, we'd love for you to drop your offering um, at our church. We have a drop, a drop box where you can um, slip the money in, you can put it in the mail. And what's wonderful, if you wanna try something different, we are now sharing with you, you can uh, give electronically and it is so easy. A lot of you have really impressed me. Um, we have a significant number of mature people and a lot of you are making your way online and I'm impressed. One of our oldest members is 92 and he's tuned in. and. We have people in their 80s, and you guys are rocking. You are rocking with your ability to come out on Facebook and to be present and to insist that we are United Church of High Park. You bless us by your presence, and you bless us by your financial resources. So we invite you again to share in whatever way feels comfortable, and if you want to push yourself, click on that button and share electronically. Thank you.
Let us pray. Though physically separated from others, we are united, and we are united in our collective offering today. We offer our collective gift, our pennies, our blessings, on this joyous Easter morning, praying that they may bring light to those in the shadows, laughter to all who mourn, and hope to those longing for life anew. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As I was sharing, it's been so good to see um, that there are different uh, members joining us. We've been surprised. We've had folks from Puerto Rico. We've had folks from Virginia. Um, and I just got alerted that we uh, have the parents of uh, one of our members, Keenan. Her parents, Hugh and Verlene, are joining us from Kankakee. If I'm wrong, y'all get me. I think joining us from Kankakee. So it's good if you want to be noticed or, you know, your name mentioned, please, you know, just uh, Facebook us and we'll mention you next Sunday. It's been good to have all of you with us here on this Sunday. We hope that there's a word of hope for you all. Um, uh, as we think about joys and concerns, things that we can be praying for, we really want to lift up our health care workers that are on the front lines. We want to lift up people that have to go to work this week. And we want to lift up people, you know, uh, that uh, don't understand the seriousness of staying at home. Uh, those were some of the things that came up during our Wednesday meeting. Uh, a couple more announcements. Our 2030 group, we get together this Tuesday, so uh, don't forget that. You'll be getting more information. Our 2030 group, you can check us out on Facebook. We will be doing our Zoom meeting, and we meet at 6 o'clock p.m., so we'd love to have all our 2030 folks show up. On Wednesday, we get together to have a little bit of comedy, to check in and to pray, because we could use a little bit of laughter right now. That group has been going strong. We would love to have you. Please check out our Facebook page. Uh, we put information out there as well. Um, and then we'd love for you to meet us next Sunday because we are still celebrating Easter and uh, we love to have you. And we see when you check in and we feel the warmth and we feel all the love. So I wanna say, Happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday, and I hope that you are lifted in your spirit as Jesus was lifted up. At this time, we're going to have a closing hymn, and then we will pray out together. So we're having a closing hymn. If you know it, sing it. If you see words that come up, sing it. And if you don't, hey, do that thing we do really well, hum. <laughs> but whatever, just join in the spirit with us. Happy Easter again. you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face toward you and give you peace. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for joining us today. Have a beautiful Easter. <laughs>